Let me know. Hello, everyone. We are starting our live PRP with our amazing patient, Mina, over here. She's got her numbing cream on. Kim, our nurse, already drew her blood. And now we are just separating the platelets. We're gonna spin it down one more time so it's super concentrated. And then we are gonna start the treatment. It takes just about the right amount of time for us to draw your blood um, and the numbing cream to sit on. And then as soon as the blood is done spinning, we're ready to start. You know how do you feel over there? I feel good. Are you excited about this? A little tingling feeling. I'm super excited. Does it feel funny around your lips? Uh, a little bit, yeah. Tickles around the nose. <laughs> you definitely want to do numbing with this treatment. One time I had to do it without on accident. How long do you keep the numbing cream on for, Shalane? The numbing stays on for 30 minutes. So just about the same amount of time that it takes to spin the blood down. And we always ask that our patients come in as hydrated as possible, which Mina was. And Mina, tell us about the blood draw. Did you think that it hurt? Were no, you nervous at all? No, no, not at all. It was pain-free and it went so quick, really, it was so fast. Just felt like a little poke, right? Just a little tiny poke, yeah. No, it was good. So what are you the most excited about? For oh God. Smoking? Just the whole thing. Uh, the results after, and uh, my skin just has been really bad lately. I, it's my fault. I've been slacking, sleeping with my makeup on. So uh oh. Yeah. Don't tell us that. <laughs> yeah, There's oh, three estheticians in the room here. That's the yeah, most important just thing. Just a few times. Yeah. So um, yeah. This this uh, face needs a uh, major work. I would rather you have your wash your face if I mean I obviously want you to wash your face morning and night but if you had to choose yeah. washing your face at yeah. night is the most important. Yeah. Good tip, Shalene. Oh, that is a good. Oh, and it's Tip Tuesday. It is. Tip it Tuesday. is. Should we hashtag that tip? Yeah. Tip Tuesday. Tip Tuesday. Welcome all. And who do we have behind the cameras here? Why don't you guys get a shot of each oh, other? Oh no. All right. Here it goes, ladies. We're not, I'm not looking not, so sharp, no. but say hi. Danielle. I'm just going to show you. Hello, Got hello. it rolling on Instagram and Facebook. Yeah. And there's Laura. Little does she, oh, I was going to say, hi, we only Laura. had you. Hi. Hello, lovelies. Okay, back to the pretty girls over here. <laughs> back right. to the pretty girls. Oh, well, get out of here. So we were so excited to feature a live microneedling with PRP because it's actually one of our October specials. Um, typically, we charge 700, I'm sorry, 600 for um, a microneedling with PRP, but this month only is on special for 500, but we are also going to gift um, our patients who book and purchase this month with a complimentary Oxygenetics Foundation. What we love about Oxygenetics is that... Worth $70. It is worth $70. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I love it. But it matches to your skin type. We have um, a myriad of different colors so we can find um, any type of foundation to match your skin type. Oxygenetics actually lays on your skin like a screen door so it promotes healing and oxygen flow in and out post-procedure. And for those patients that are heading right back to work, have an event in the next few days, it's perfect because you can cover up. Great. Have you tried Oxygenetics yet? I have not. Well, you're going to today. Oh, you're going to love so it. It's exciting. a breathable. Did yes. we mention that it's a breathable foundation? Full coverage. Uh, full, full coverage. coverage. Yes. <laughs> full coverage. So we're going to spin this down one more time. I will be right back. And we also have the foundation in acne fighting for really? as well. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So exciting. So what are what other um, skin treatments have you done here? I have gotten the hydrofacial. That felt so good. Uh, your, my face felt really, really clean. I felt like after I did that, you know, I did use moisturizers before, but I felt like the moisturizer was actually, you know, going in my, like deep in my skin. And, Penetrating. Yeah. It was before I used to just lay on top of my skin, feeling good for, you know, a couple hours, but with getting that done, you know, it felt 
it was just my, my skin was sucking it up. How often do you do those? Uh, I'll recommend it probably. <laughs> Shailene, how, how often should you get a, a hydrofacial done? For maintenance, we recommend hydrofacials once a month. Once just because it clears out all that dead skin, all that debris. Yeah. Um, but it's definitely okay to do it a little bit more frequently like that if you have um, a special occasion coming up, like a wedding or a graduation party or yeah. a party, or if you just want to have a nice, healthy, refreshing glow for the weekend. Yeah. Hydrofacials are amazing because there's no downtime. It just gives you that instant, instant glow. Yes. Yeah. And remember we did... Uh, Dermaplaning. That was yes. really nice too. Just taking off all that dead skin. Dermaplaning is a great additive to any treatment actually. Yeah. Um, it uses a little blade to scrape off all the dead skin cells so we're actually removing the dead skin cells that are just laying on the surface so that any treatment that we do right after that is basically enhanced. Um, we're bypassing that layer of dead skin yeah. cells. A couple myths with dermaplaning are that um, it will make your hair go back darker. <laughs> the little vellus hairs or peach fuzz that is on the side um, of your face or all over actually. That is a complete myth. It will grow back in just how it was before. Yeah. That's and true. then you know it's That's time for another one actually. So no beard ladies and gents. No, no beard. Yes. <laughs> no beard. Julie says hello. Hi Julie. Thank you for watching. Hi Julie. <laughs> And we're encouraging questions. We'll be answering your questions as they come through. So ask away. The more the merrier. Yes. People always have questions about PRP because it's such an interesting, interesting procedure. A lot of the questions that I get are what are the differences between regular microneedling and microneedling with PRP? Yeah. And not to take away from regular microneedling because it still is a wonderful treatment in and of itself, um, but PRP is just an enhanced treatment. Um, because it contains your body's own growth factors with the plasma that we use as the glide instead of a regular growth factor or a hyaluronic acid, it um, increases your cell turnover rate a little bit quicker and your body recognizes it as your own so it's faster healing time and it gives you an overall nice even glow. However, microneedling is a wonderful treatment in and of itself too because it's still infusing really great serums into the skin at a deeper level because it's, it's an aesthetic treatment and um, it's going deeper into the la deeper into your layers of skin. So as your skin rejuvenates and um, exfoliates over the next month, two months, those skin cells that come up to the surface were treated on the day of your treatment so your glow lasts for a long time. As far as downtime goes, I would say you're probably gonna experience maybe two to three days of intense redness. And you'll see directly after the treatment, it's pretty red, like a very intense sunburn. It looks like a yeah, sunburn. Oh, yes. I yes. went to the beach without a sunscreen. Exactly, <laughs> which is what I would That's, never want you okay. to do. Um, but honestly, the very next day, once you wash your face with a gentle cleanser in the morning, most patients are very pleasantly surprised to see how much it's calmed down. Yeah. And now it's just kind of a waiting game. So we'll use all of our really great serums, all of our great treatments, which is just gonna enhance the microneedling. Like we have displayed right over here, our brand new line that we're so excited to bring in, Elastin. Um, it actually uses a trihex technology to help give the snap back into your skin. So like when we lift up our skin and kind of let it go, that's the elasticity in our skin. Um, so it's a great post procedure treatment to put on after specifically microneedling, but any laser treatment because it's nice and calming. It's soothing, it's not abrasive, it's not harsh at all, and it just aids in giving you that overall glow um, during your healing time. And I'll be right back because I think our serum and our plasma is ready. Yeah. Are you feeling numb? Very numb. I actually, I think I touched, uh, my tongue touched my face a little bit, so my <laughs> tongue is a little numb. <laughs> Would you like some water? good. Um, I have, yeah, thank you. My it's good. Tongue. We know it's working. Yeah, it's definitely working. <laughs> I can't feel my tongue anymore. That's good. You'll be glad that you, uh... Dr. Zuliani says, hi, Nina. Oh, hi, Dr. Dr. Z. Z. Hi, Dr. Z. <laughs> He's in lecturing right now. Lectures in class or something. <laughs> You're missed. <laughs> I have friends that are messaging me, they're watching it live. Yay! Are they good? Yes. Tell them to ask their questions. Yes. Bring in some questions and we'll be happy to answer them. Great. 
You're like the guinea pig in your group of friends, aren't you? Yes. Everyone, yes. Wants, everyone wants to see you do it first. Yes. I mean, there has been so much hype about this anyway, lately. It's there has, like, yeah. Yeah, uh, like after Kim Kardashian uh, talked about where she got it done. So I think uh, everybody's interested in this right now. It's a really good treatment for so many different, um, you know, for pores, for overall tone and texture. I mean, it's for acne scarring. It can be used for so many different things, and there's minimal downtime, which for people is huge. And how often, Shaleen, we have a question. How often Absolutely. do you think we should do, um, how often should we do uh, the PRP? So these treatments can actually be done four to six weeks apart. And we say that um, you definitely want to do a series of these. It's not that you won't notice a difference after just one, but it's kind of like a ripple effect. You do one treatment, four to six weeks later, you do another one, and the second one starts playing off the first one. The third one starts playing off the second one. The fourth one starts playing off the third one. And once you do a series of three to four, your skin is in really, really good condition, and it's a grave enough difference that you notice a huge improvement in your skin yeah. that you either say, thank you so much, Shaleen, I'm so glad I found you. <laughs> I'll call you in a few months yeah. when I need a little pick-me-up treatment, or wow, that's amazing. I can't believe what four treatments did. I kind of want to keep going and maybe do another one or two. Yeah. So it's totally up to you and how you feel, but on average, we say three to four treatments um, consecutively, four to six weeks apart. Okay. Can you tell us what you're doing right now, Shalene? Absolutely. So we are just extracting the bottom part of the plasma because that is what contains the most concentrated growth factors. We have another question coming in. For sure. Is the face going to be swollen afterwards? Everyone is completely different, and every time that you do a treatment and you're you know, inducing some sort of controlled injury, there is the propensity for swelling. Um, it depends how sensitive your skin is, but the good thing about microneedling is I try to be very communicative with my patients in finding out what type of schedule they're on, what kind of events they have coming up, um, and the skin pen can actually be dialed down to as little as 0.5 millimeters okay. or as deep as two millimeters which is still pretty superficial in the skin compared to um, most laser treatments mm -hmm. so we can definitely um specifically cater it towards whatever's most convenient for that patient my gloves are up to get a change feel nice and numb Mina? yeah you look so cute thank you <laughs> it probably <laughs> feels the weirdest around your lips doesn't it she I said she licked it by accident yeah oh Shoot. my tongue is a little numb now that's okay. One time um, I got it in my eye and that oh didn't feel God. the greatest. And another time, yes, I licked my lips. Don't worry, it's not detrimental. It just tastes a little funny. Yeah. All right, I'm going to lay you back. We'll get the numbing cream off and then we will start. Everyone always asks too with the numbing cream, are my lips huge? Does it look like I got lip filler? <laughs> They're always sorely disappointed way. after. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm okay with that. Yeah. But it makes your um, your lips feel like they're way more plump than they actually are. <laughs> and then I'm going to have you actually scoot up just like five inches and that should be good. Right. If are you cozy? If someone comes in and watches this video after we're live, if you watch it during the replay, make sure that you still ask whatever questions you have because we'll come back in and answer those questions. So yes, be sure to ask any questions you have. And you can always direct message us. One oh, thing yes. that um, we're really big on here is consultations. I love doing skincare consultations because it gives you firsthand, um, you know, insight on what we do here at the office. We can show you before and after pictures, go over some videos with you, find a treatment path that's right for you. Um, and these can all, these videos can always be referred back to after they've been recorded too. So you can see what it looks like from start to finish. And speaking of start to finish, we are embarking on this journey with Mina, and she's going to be sending progress pics and little progress videos, so you can definitely go and um, follow her page if you want, or we'll probably be reposting a lot of them. So we're going to see exactly what the microneedling treatment looks like from start to finish, seven days, mm -hmm. and then of course the final result. That just went on my face just now. 
Oh, it flipped around? Why? Oh, hi. Um, click that little thing at the bottom, that little arrow. In Sorry, the folks. <laughs> okay. We're, We're live. We want that to see you We're too. Because <laughs> look of concern. Well, I would have had that look sometimes, of concern. But sometimes people talks. need to see the beauty behind the camera, Absolutely. too. Absolutely. You know? They need to see the crew. I have another question yes. coming in. Is it good for hair growth? And thank you for the questions. We greatly appreciate it. Yes, yeah, face, Facebook, get it together with the questions, people. <laughs> Instagram, <laughs> absolutely. It, it, we use um, PRP for hair regrowth. Um, it's a treatment that both Dr. Zuli and I actually do together. Um, same concept from the start. Dry your blood, spin it down um, to the platelets. We actually do tiny little micro channels with the micro pen that you'll see um, in the hairline on top of the scalp. And then Dr. Zuliani actually comes in and he will do the PRP injection. So it helps simulate hair growth a little bit on a deeper level. And we've had wonderful, wonderful results with that with our patients. Um, same time frame as far as treatments go, four to six weeks apart. So we've got our liquid gold right here. And what we're gonna do is just drizzle it. I like to start on the forehead, and then we are gonna start to microneedle the serum right back into the skin. Are you nervous? No, I'm ready. Good, because it's exciting. <laughs> Nothing to be nervous about. All right, here we go. Should feel like little scratchies. Oh, that's it? Yeah. Oh, no, it's good. I actually love doing this treatment because it's kind of relaxing for yeah. me. I okay, feel like I'm mowing the lawn. Oh, you're mowing the lawn. It's kind of therapeutic because you, you have to be very meticulous so that you're ensuring a very even treatment with patients. But um, just going in little lines, left, right, up, down, diagonal. And as you can see, the skin turns a little pink, and that's totally normal. It's your skin just reacting to the needles. And what would you say, what would you kind of compare this feeling to, Nina? Honestly, I don't know. It, it really, there's no pain. Like a tingling feeling, no, nothing, nothing crazy at all. Is it kind of irritating, though? No, no. Some people I'm do surprised. say it's irritating. So, I mean, everyone has a completely, completely different threshold. Really? Mm -hmm. No. There's no pain? No. The worst I'm that saying. someone has said was, yeah, it's just, it's, it's of course tolerable, but kind of just a little irritating. I have a lot of people that say it's comparable to, um, like, microblading, the eyebrows, or a tattoo. No. I've gotten my eyebrows uh, microbladed recently. It's worse? No. <laughs> this feels, no. There's no comparison. No, this is, for me, I don't know if it's a numbing thing or not, but very little, minimal thing. And that's surprising too, because actually the forehead is um, where your skin is the thinnest and it's the most bony. Really? So I kind of like to start off with the forehead, because then it gets easier and easier as you move down the face. So it's like, if you can handle the worst, you'll be good to go. I would say the most annoying part is probably the, the noise. The sound. Yeah. Maybe, you know, so should, close to your head. You should write to the manufacturers to put like, you know BMW actually like tests the, the noise for their blinkers. Yeah. <laughs> we should have it singing songs. I did not know that. It is true. It should be talking to you in an Australian accent. I should? <laughs> no. The pen. <laughs> I don't know if I can do an Australian accent, I was going to say. So we'll start to see each area that we treat get a little bit more pink, a little bit more red. And we are just creating these tiny little micro channels into the skin to infuse the serum. Well, you look relaxed. This is uh, nice, actually. Okay. I, w I have to say though, most people don't think it's nice. Really? Yeah. This is relaxing. I did have one patient that said that fell asleep and said it feels like a warm massage. Yeah. I I, th I think after a while, if you just get really numb, you don't really. You're feel used it. to yeah. it. Yeah. 
Well, you two have both had it, Laura and Danielle. Do you think it, what do you think it feels like? I thought it was fine. Um, it's it fine. Tickles. Yeah, it's it's kind of an, an some bit. spots are more annoying than others, like around the nose. Oh, yeah. yeah I, your nose, like, I feel like you have to sneeze. Yeah. You can see the color. But I don't think it's painful, but no. I definitely think the numbing helps. Yeah. For sure. It is a high numbing. I use the high numbing cream on you too. We have a really good numbing cream. I think sometimes we build things up in our head. That's to, probably why. I yes. think I was more nervous. I was anticipating something more painful. Or a little more pain, but no. That's actually good. Mm -hmm. To think it's going to be way worse than it is. So I like to go right underneath the eyes um, after the forehead because the setting is still um, pretty light and you have to be really, really, really careful um, by pulling the skin outside the orbital rim. But most patients actually love this spot the best because it really, really hones in on those crow's feet. So fine lines, wrinkles around the eyes, our little smile lines, it really, really treats those. Um, a lot of other questions that I typically get with um, microneedling is how soon after and before you can receive other aesthetic treatments mm -hmm. like Botox and filler. Yeah. Good question. Um, you can always do, you can get that if you want. Is your eye burning? No. Okay. Mm -hmm. You tell me if it does. Um, you would want to wait, prob you can do um, a Botox injection actually right after microneedling. Really? Mm -hmm. okay. But typically, you know, if your face is a little bit red or, um, you know, we do have some patients that swell a little bit, we like to say wait a good week. Okay. Um, but receiving Botox and then microneedling, we like to say wait a good two to three weeks. Okay. It's still, microneedling is pretty superficial mm -hmm. um, and Botox is usually already into the muscle by then, but we like to say just in case. How does it feel um, around your eyes, Nina? It's good, especially when you put the liquid gold on. <laughs> okay, for this one I'm going to go a little bit closer, so I'm going to pull down. Four, three, two, one. Four, three, two, one. Good job. Try to get as close as I can. Five, four, three, two, one. Most um, patients will come back after their first treatment. I always like to say, so "What did you notice the most? What type of improvement?" Mm -hmm. And the number one um, improvement that patients say is um, pore size. Pore size. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Reduction in pore yeah. size. Who doesn't want yeah. smaller pores? Yes. Now, it's kind of funny because microneedling doesn't actually reduce the size of your pores because there's not really any treatment out there that does that, but it definitely reduces the appearance That's of That's another it. question coming in, Shalene. Wonderful. Is it better to inject the plasma in the face? So that is what we like to call PRF, or platelet-rich fibrin. And that definitely is an option for patients. Um, it's, there's no hyaluronic acid in there like a normal filler, so it's not necessarily going to give you, you know, that clump that a lot of patients like directly after filler. But yes, you can inject it. We have a comment. Um, Julie says that her friend Dina had a procedure in the office with you thurs last Thursday. Okay. And she said when she saw her on Monday, her skin looked amazing. Yay! We well, love positive thanks, Julie. feedback. Thank you. Thank you. That's that great. is the best reward when mm -hmm. patients come in afterwards and we get to see those results. And I'm a little skeptical sometimes because I never want to give anyone these are ones I really close to you. Good job. Um, I'd rather patients be pleasantly surprised and notice a difference after one treatment. Um, but sometimes we think of how much damage we've done to our skin over the years. I wish there was one treatment, but there's not. 
to rectify and just undo everything. So we always recommend packages and we always recommend multiple treatments. And sometimes it's, it's nice because nothing is ever set in stone and you know, sometimes it can be a little bit intimidating coming into the industry and learning exactly what is right for you. And so we're all very big on educating our patients on picking the right treatment path so just know that there's always room to alter things to give you the best results because everyone is completely different. Okay, so on your nose, it might feel like you're gonna sneeze a little bit. <laughs> if you have to, just tell me. Yeah, this is cool. But the nose is definitely not something that we can neglect or make sure that we do a really, really precise even passes on because most people are very porous, and everyone loves that it reduces the amount of blackheads on the nose yes. and pore size. So we just have to muster through the annoying part of it being on your nose. And it does make you kind of have to see. Okay, a little bit tickles, yeah. One time I had a patient, we started counting. Counting? Counting how many times she sneezed. Oh. <laughs> and we got up to 37. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. I'm not lying. I said, are you allergic to my granulin? <laughs> no, she came right back next time. She didn't sneeze that much the second time. I think she got used to it. So hopefully you guys can see. Um, she's pretty pink right now, and... I don't think that you'll be able to see on the video, but there's some very, very minor pinpoint bleeding. That's a normal reaction. Very normal reaction. A lot of people actually will watch videos online and kind of see it. Look like know, a gory a, mess. A very gory mess. That's not necessarily the case with my video. Now, if Mina actually had some deeper scar, acne scarring or really, really deep wrinkles that we were trying to work on, can you hand me one of those little 4x4s right there, Laura? Then we would go a little bit deeper. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I think that's what I, I seen. I looked up those videos, and that's what got me a little nervous. Yes. But when we're just trying to rejuvenate the skin, and I mean, honestly, I do go a little bit deeper around the cheek, so we might see a little bit more um, pinpoint bleeding there, just because it helps so much with pore size and because the cheeks um, have thicker skin, yeah. so we can go deeper in those areas. Shalene, I got a question. For sure. Uh, from someone before. What about the, you know, the microneedling roll at home? For Why sure. Why you, is that okay to do Like that? the roller? The roller. I actually have a lot of questions about dermal yeah. rollers. Here's my qualms with that. Um, most people aren't storing them properly so a lot of bacteria mm -hmm. can actually gather on dermal rollers that are kept at home yes. um, and we would never want to roll or microneedle bacteria that your skin. Skin. So okay. sterilizing is huge sterilizing is huge and you know most most homes don't actually have the proper sterilization yeah. um, equipment to keep them nice and clean so number one you know your kids are grabbing them there's dust in the air a lot of bacteria can gather on those. Um, plus, it's always good to have a professional do these kinds of treatments. Um, number one, this is a medical level grade device, so it can go a lot deeper than a derma roller can. Mm -hmm. Most of the time with derma rolling, you're just exfoliating the top layers of your skin at home, which you know, are just the skin cells just sitting there. Yeah. It's on. It's not in any way on the same level as microneedling. Okay. So it's kind of hard to compare those two. It's not infusing any serums into the skin, and it, it just can't go deep enough. Yeah. Good question. I actually have a lot of people that ask that. So it's kind of hard to compare microneedling with a derma roller, just because they're completely different. Yeah. All right, so we're going to move down to the cheeks, and we're going to turn it up a little bit. And then I'm going to have you look all the way this way. Perfect. Everyone saying hi, Nina. Hi. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm good. This fe honestly, it feels good. Are you I was comfortable? A, yeah. Okay. I was a little nervous around the eyes. I it felt a little, you know, I felt a little bit, a little more tense there. A little more intense. No. Yeah. It's still fine. So we just turned it up on her cheeks. 
Can you feel the difference? Yeah. Still no pain, it's just a little discomfort, but perfect. I'm gonna go one, two on a scale of ten. Probably a one. Okay, good. Oh, one is really questions. good. A yeah. Tough cookie. And two questions. For sure. Um, a guest is asking, I have deep scars, will it help? Absolutely. Whether you have acne scarring, which most people um, have from you know picking in their teenage years, um, like I was saying, we can actually dial the skin pen up or down to cater to each patient's specific needs. And we would, in essence, just turn the skin pen up a little bit in those areas so that we're stimulating collagen a little bit more. Um, and another question? For sure. Does it hurt? No. I'm going to let our model answer that. No. It really doesn't hurt me. We don't like to use the P word, pain, during these kinds of treatments. We like to say, like, discomfort. discomfort. Because honestly, it's not painful. No. Now, it's not like getting a warm massage and laying on the beach with a drink in your hand either. But the results are definitely, definitely worth it. Yeah. And I have another question coming in. Um, is it okay to do if there's some existing acne? So I would never want to go over active acne with a skin pen, especially like if it was um, a cyst, a, a pustule, or a pimple, because that would just break open the skin, and then we would be spreading the bacteria. Okay. But um, I have had patients that come in, you know, with a little pimple here and there, and we just um, would do the extraction first, and then kind of avoid that area. So for patients with active acne, this microneedling treatment is not the best. We would actually want to treat the active acne first um, with a series of hydrofacials or even BBL blue light therapy. And then once we have the acne um, situation cleared up, then we could work um, on microneedling. Excellent. I have another question coming in. Can I get it done if I use a retina? We would want you to be, it depends what percentage, but just for, um, you know, to be safe, we would want to say, let's refrain from using your retinol a good week before microneedling. And then during the recuperation stage, we'd want to say a week after. Just because we're putting your skin in a fragile state, kind of like baby skin, and we want to use very, very gentle products on it afterwards. After a week, you can definitely go back on. So it should start to be feeling very tight in the areas that we've treated already, Nina. Is that yeah. correct? Yeah. A lot of patients will like kind of move around their face or talk like this because they think they can't move their face just because it feels so tight. It does feel tight. My forehead feels really tight. That's a good feeling though. Yeah. We want our skin to be How tight. How long does um, someone have to stop the retinol before the treatment? I would say, to be safe, a good seven to 10 days. However, if it's a very, very low retinol, it's not something that we have to, you can always call with any questions and, and talk to me about it before your appointment. And if it's a very, very low dose, it's not extremely detrimental if it's only been, let's say, five days. Can microneedling be done on the neck? Absolutely. A lot of patients um, like to do their neck as well. What about what's it called? Um, stretch marks. Does it help with stretch marks? So it can. Im it's not going to completely diminish them. I, I kind of have to be very choosy with my work here. Um, it's not going to completely uh, get rid of stretch marks, but it can diminish the appearance of them. So if a patient ever came in and had a couple stretch marks, mm -hmm. um, we can always do add-on services. And if you were coming in for it, the gland fire facial and wanted to add on a few areas, yeah. always just call and ask about that and put some numbing cream on and definitely treat those areas that you're interested in. And kind of like how we were talking about before, there's no treatment out there that is just one and done. Um, so it definitely takes a series. And someone's asking Shaleen um, if we're running any specials on this, and she touched on that earlier, so maybe you want to talk about it again. For sure. 
So we are calling um, this special the Glampire Facial for the month of October. Plan Vampire, of course. Um, just because we have so many patients that are very inquisitive about it. And typically this treatment, the Glampire Facial with PRP, is $600. But for the month of October, we are charging not only $500, but you also get a complimentary Oxygenetics makeup foundation. And the makeup foundation is a $70 value, and it's a great foundation to actually wear directly post-treatment because it lays on your skin like a screen door. So it promotes oxygen flow in and out, helps with healing, it's not too abrasive, like, um some of the ingredients found in our normal everyday foundation. And it'll give you that even coverage to cover up some of this redness. So let's say Mina actually had to go to work right now. We could put on some Oxygenetics and no one would know that she got the treatment. Um, again, I have um, questions. How many treatments for maximum results? I know we've discussed series, but give us a good number for maximum results. Absolutely. And how far apart? One more time. So we like to do this treatment in um, groups of three to four, four being ideal. We do these treatments four to six weeks apart, so it's definitely, you know, a journey that you're kind of um, partnering with us for. It's not, nothing is just bam, one and you're good for life. Um, it's kind of like a ripple effect. So we do one treatment, four to six weeks later, we do another one. Four to six weeks later, we do another one. Once you've got about three under your belt, you can decide whether to even save the fourth one for a little bit longer when you need a little pick-me-up or to continue on, do the fourth one, um, same as the rest of them in a series. It's enough that you'll see a great difference in your skin. You'll be very satisfied with how far it's come as far as the overall texture, tone, pore size, wrinkle size. You're either super excited and you say, wow, I struck gold here. I definitely want to do another series, maybe just one or two. Or you say, thanks, Shalene, my skin's in amazing condition. I'm going to use the you know, great products that you recommended um, for my home care. And I'll call you when I need a little pick-me-up. Um, as far as downtime with this, for me, if I had an event coming up that I really wanted to get my skin in order for, such as... You know, holiday or um, a wedding, brides even, I would say you can do this treatment probably two weeks before that event. Because as you can see, there there is a little bit of downtime with redness. But if you did it two weeks before a special event, that would really get your skin um, in tip top shape. So keep that in mind with the October special because you could always purchase one and then save it or when you have an event coming up, or to get your skin holiday ready. How does it feel around your chin, Nina? It feels good. It feels good. It's good. <laughs> I think it, it got so numb to the point you, I don't really feel it like that anymore. Okay, so I'm going to kind of go like this a little bit with your chin. A little bit less. Perfect. So I'm very, very meticulous. I like to get every last square inch. It just makes for an overall even treatment, and you know you're treating every last spot. And I have never had filler in my lips, but I'm telling you, when Laura did mine and she went super, super close to my lips, I swear it plumped them up. So keep that in mind while you're here and see if you like it. I was like going to say, I felt, you know, a lot of pokes and pinches around the lip area. Yep. That's probably the most comfort it ahead because lips are very sensitive mm -hmm. all right now I want to scoot up a little bit and make sure I'm getting right under here let me know if you need me to move no good good thanks so that we have a nice even line right here and some parts of the skin react a little bit differently than others so some areas are more sensitive where they can get really really pink that's why I said it kind of feels like I'm no one I'm on. Yeah. I always like to um, talk to patients too and say, you know, what areas bother you the most? And most people will say, um, the lines around my lips or pore size 
Um, so that's definitely incorporated into the treatment on areas that we focus on more. Just to do a couple extra passes. Um, so sometimes with a little bit more um, mature or older patients, they will swell up a little bit right here because we like to do a couple extra passes around these lines. But of course, over time, it's just gonna improve them even more. So in what age uh, do you think you should start a treatment like this? So I like to say that it is always easier to do preventative work than corrective work. Yeah. Um, I started doing a lot of these treatments when I was in my um, mid to late 20s, mm -hmm. just because I really started noticing a difference in my skin as far as how much sun exposure I was getting, um, fine lines and wrinkles, and it's one of those things that it's never too late to start, but maybe for someone who is um, in their late teens, early 20s, we would want, everyone's different first of all, so it depends what type of um, skin condition we're treating, mm -hmm. but on average I would say most patients would do better with um, hydrofacials and dermaplaning as far as their maintenance treatment goes, yeah. but not necessarily everyone. And then anything above that age, like mid 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, yeah. everyone can benefit from microneedling. It's what I love about these treatments too, this part might be a little sensitive mm -hmm. too, just to warn you, is that there's something for everyone. So if you don't have a lot of downtime, um, if you know you have a very rigorous um, schedule as far as with kids or a work schedule or travel schedule, this is the perfect treatment to maintain a healthy glow and to help stimulate collagen, but without setting you back too many days. Yeah. Some of the more aggressive laser treatments that we do, you know, you, you have to keep your skin really, really um, moisturized and kind of gooped up, we say, for optimal healing. And a lot of people don't like to go out in public while they're recuperating. Yeah. So this is a great alternative for those types of patients. Or it's great to, you know, incorporate microneedling if you even are doing aggressive laser treatments because it's at a superficial level and we're still treating the skin cells that are on the surface of the skin. And it promotes healing um, in between laser treatments. Now what she can expect for her aftercare is we would just want to do a gentle cleanser, nothing with any anti-aging, nothing anything with any um, glycolic or salicylic acid, just because her skin is in a more fragile state. Are you okay with it on your upper lip? Yeah. Almost done. This is a sensitive area. Yeah. You're doing good though. Good job. Uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, aftercare. Gentle cleanser, nothing with a glycolic, nothing with salicylic for about a week and a half. Seven, seven to 10 days. Then you can go back to your normal schedule um, if you incorporate an exfoliant okay. into your regimen. Um, any areas that we're going over a couple times, especially around the mouth, just because that's where we get those deeper lines, so we really wanna address those. Um, sometimes you could get a little perioral peeling. And a good moisturizer, such as the Elastin Ultra Rich Moisturizer or Soothing Balm, is something perfect to treat with. And all it takes is a little bit, and it helps to moisturize those areas. Um, it was funny, the first time I did it, I didn't have any peeling. And then the second time I did it, I focused a little bit more on my mouth, and I did have a little bit of peeling. But nothing that a light moisturizer couldn't help. Okay. To heal. Now, do you feel any pain, discomfort in the areas that we treated, or is it kind of just when I'm treating like a little bit more of those sensitive areas? I think it was around the mouth, was especially around the upper lip. Yes. That was a little you could feel uncomfortable. It. Yeah, you feel that. Like a little pain. I like to go back over a couple areas that we just want to focus on when we have a little bit extra PRP because we never want to waste any. What feels the tightest on you? My forehead? 
and right now around the, around the mouth too. So Ooh. is that feeling going to last, the tightness? The tightness will subside in a few hours actually. It okay. always feels the most tight directly after the treatment mm -hmm. and during the treatment okay. because we're opening up those pores. Okay. Um, that's why moisturizing is so pertinent and important. And the more you keep your skin moisturized, the faster it will heal. Okay. Um, so as far as the elastin line goes, we have our skin nectar, and that has the trihex therapy in it. Skin nectar, um, it's one of our higher end lines, but we were actually really, really excited to bring it in because it promotes faster healing during um, a microneedling treatment or any laser treatment for that matter. It's great to even use to prep your skin before a laser treatment. And it's, I'm going to put it on Amina um, right after we're done with this microneedling, and it's going to feel really, really soothing. It's not greasy. It doesn't make patients break out. It's super emollient, so it's nice and soft and soaks into the skin very, very nicely. And then my other favorite product from that line is the Recovery Balm. It's called Soothe and Recovery Balm, and that's exactly what it is, soothing. And it kind of feels like a Vaseline or an Aquaphor one, but it is not as thick, so it doesn't feel like it's um, clogging your pores, and it's just basically locking in that moisture. Somebody asked if you numbed her face. We most certainly did. Yes. <laughs> we put the numbing on for 30 minutes. And it takes just that amount of time to spin down the blood. So patients will come in, we'll do the skin assessment, um, answer any questions that they might have because I never want anyone to be nervous. I want them to be excited for this treatment. I'm gonna do a little more right here, actually. Um, so that they're very much at ease. Wash their face, put the numbing cream on. I like to answer any questions they might have about any other treatments. Or we can turn the lights down, and you can take a nice little nap and relax. And it's just the right amount of time for the um, blood to separate from the plasma. And then we take the numbing cream off and do the treatment. You made it. So now I'm just using the extra PRP to soak into her skin. And this is the time where I like to kind of go around, see if there's any areas that um, need a little bit of extra attention, answer any questions that she might have about aftercare, talk about when we're gonna schedule her next one, type of results she's gonna see, and so forth. Um, where do you draw the blood from? Um, the forearm. Kim, our nurse, will come in. We like to ask that patients are as hydrated as possible because that makes for a very, very easy draw. Um, we've never had a problem with it. Sometimes patients are a little leery of that. It's actually quite an easy process. Didn't you think so, Mina? Yeah, it's quick and easy. Pain free. Pain free. Just a little poke. What you would expect from drawing blood. But it was really fast. It literally takes yeah. about three minutes total and then it's done. Yeah. And we do have some patients that are a little bit funny about seeing blood, so they just turn their head the other way. You're nice and rosy right mm -hmm. now. Yeah. You can see the <laughs> color. Good a lot good. of patients like are actually tight. pleasantly surprised to see how it looks afterwards. And that it's not like the gory pictures that they saw online. No. It's not. Still feels tight though, right? It feels tight. It's a good tight feeling. A good tight, yeah. exactly. Kind of feels like a clay mask drying. Yes. So this is the Elastin Regenerative Regenerating Skin Nectar. This is going to feel like butter on your face, let me tell you. It's just this nice light serum. Good stuff. Let's see, Shaleen. Perfect. 
Now this is from our post procedure high end line, but it is so worth it. And it should just feel like buttery nectar soothing into your skin. Excellent. How often should she moisturize? Moisturize as needed. Um, you'll be able to tell once your skin, you know, is starting to dry up a little bit, but at least two times a day. But don't I ever would... let it dry out, right? Exactly. Don't let it dry out. Is there any products that you would recommend that they do not put on their skin that they're used to moisturizing with? Absolutely. So anything with um, harsh ingredients such as glycolic, lactic, salicylic acid, um, even vitamin C, like any anti-aging. Your skin's in a little bit of a fragile state right now, so we just want to use post-procedure creams, such as the elastin line that we have here, um, a gentle cleanser, and an SPF if you're gonna be going outside. Okay, so you have to stay away from the sun. Here's the thing, I, I really like to explain to patients, yes, you cannot be outside laying out or out for a bike ride without protection on your skin. Mm -hmm. However, I live my life after I get treatments, I just make sure that I apply sunscreen mm -hmm. and that I reapply sunscreen because sunscreen only has an efficacy of two hours. Okay. Um, can you use the same moisturizer that you use during the day at night? Yes. I always recommend patients um, to get our recovery treatments. Sometimes they're a little leery of it and then they go home and come back the next day and send their husband in or come in themselves and they say, okay, sorry, I should have got that. This balm's gonna feel really good on your skin. Nice and soothing. Ta-da! Complete! How are you feeling? Pretty though. Feels good. You're, it's like you're a, glowing. It's a warm feeling now. Good. Uh, yeah. Like I was in the sun. <laughs> in a good way. And she was such a lovely patient. Yeah. She did great. And it just looks a little bit pink right now. Mm -hmm. Stay tuned. She's going to send in some pics tomorrow. Yes. Um, so stay tuned to see what each of the day looks like. And we're going to go on this journey with her to see how it progresses. And, of course, for the end results, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.